In this problem, we have a weight suspended by two wires. Initially, the weight and the wires are in the vertical plane x, y. The suspension is symmetric so that the wires have the same lengths and we have two angles alpha so that y is a symmetry axis. Then we take the weight and rotate it so that it moves out of the xy plane and assumes a position in the yz plane. And in order to hold the weight in this position, we attach to it a horizontal wire along the z axis. So if I look at the weight in the yz plane, the additional wire appears as this line. The weight is inclined by an angle theta, and originally the weight was at O. So we go with a rotation from O to D. Our task is to determine the forces in the wires in the new position. The free body diagram for the weight involves four forces. The weight, the tension in the additional horizontal wire, and the tensions in the wires TB and TC. The equilibrium equation is written in the vector form, and at this stage I would like to note that the forces H and W have well-defined directions. H acts along positive z, so I use the vector k, and w acts along negative j. So to quantify this equation, we need to determine the vectors tb and tc. To do this, I will go through a series of triangles. The first triangle is the original triangle. From this triangle, I will get the locations of the points B and C. This triangle is located in the XY plane. The X coordinate of B is minus L sine alpha. And the Y coordinate is L cos alpha. For the point C, the calculation is very similar. And the only difference is that the x-coordinate is now positive. Next, I proceed with the rotated triangle. This triangle actually is identical to the previous one because we simply rotated the previous triangle. And what I need to calculate here is the length DE and it is, of course, equal to L cos alpha. Now, I would like to identify the coordinates of the point D. To do this, first I observe that the Z coordinate is equal to the length ED times sine theta. Since ED has been calculated previously as L cos alpha, the expression for ZD takes this form. For YD, I calculate it as EO minus ED cos theta, minus this distance, ED cos theta. Next, I observe that ED and EO are equal to each other because D is obtained upon rotating of the weight from the position O. That's why I can replace EO with ED 
and then ED is equal to L cos alpha, and this gives me the expression for YD, and therefore the vector OD could be written in this form. Now I am ready to proceed with calculations of the forces. The force TB is computed as the magnitude of TB times the unit vector of DB or the ratio of DB divided by L, the length of the wire. DB in turn could be calculated as the difference between the vector OB and the vector OD. B is the terminal point, D is the origin for this vector. Since I have calculated both OB and OD previously, I can put it together to obtain the following expression for the vector TB. I proceed in the same manner for the force TC. In this case, I deal with the vector DC calculated as OC, C is the terminal point, minus OD, D is the origin, and both vectors have been calculated, and if I put them together, I obtain this expression for TC. Now let us return to the original vector value equilibrium equation. Since the forces TB and TC have been determined, we can rewrite it explicitly. In doing so, I will factor out the projections or the coefficients in front of i, j, and k. Note that these terms represent some of the forces on x, some of the forces on y, some of the forces on z. So now I have three equations for three unknowns, T, B, T, C, and H. I solve the first equation to determine that T, B is equal to T, C. Then I substitute T, B equal to T, C to the second equation to determine their values. And finally, I substitute the values of T, B, and T, C into the last equation to determine H. In solving this problem, I have gone through a lot of calculations and obviously it is useful to ask the usual question, am I correct? I will try to show you an alternative free body diagram that will help us to establish that indeed some of my answers are correct. Actually, all of them are correct, but the only one I will check is the very last answer, that h is equal to w tangent theta. To this end, let me draw the free body diagram in the yz plane. In this plane, the force h and the force w project completely, because w is along y and h is along z. In contrast, the forces TB and TC project, but not completely. It is clear that in this plane, the best representation is for the vector TB plus 2C, or some of the tensions of the inclined wires. At any rate, the free body diagram involves these three forces now. So I lump TB and TC into one force. It is clear that if I calculate the sum of H plus W using the parallelogram rule, then the resultant blue force must cancel the red force, TB plus TC. This means this force is echolinear, and this means that if the inclined angle here is theta, this angle also has to be theta. Now, if I look at this triangle, it is clear that it's a 90 degree angle. This is W, this is theta, this edge equal in magnitude to H equal to 
W tangent theta. And this agrees with the answer I obtained on the previous slide. This is not a guarantee that everything is correct, but this is certainly a strong sign of confidence. Thank you.